Welcome everybody to TechCraft, this is Rob, and in today's video, I'll be talking all about my favorite iPad Pro accessory, the Raspberry Pi 4. Let's go. So let me just preface all of the content in this video by saying that I carry my iPad Pro with me everywhere I go. I like the form factor, I like the battery life, I really like the pen interface. So it's hard for me to switch out the iPad back to just a laptop because I need some iPad specific features. In the past, when I've needed more than what the iPad Pro could do on its own, I've actually had to carry both my laptop and my iPad Pro with me. But now I tend to just carry the iPad Pro. And if I need a bit more firepower, I'm carrying the Raspberry Pi 4 with me. Now, if you're able to just switch out back to a laptop, this might not be an ideal setup for you. But if, like me, you're carrying your iPad no matter what, then the Raspberry Pi is a great little accessory. Let's dive in now to see what the Raspberry Pi 4 offers. Then we'll take a look at the kit that you need. And then finally, Finally, I'll talk you through a few of the use cases where I find the Raspberry Pi to be a great little accessory. So the Raspberry Pi comes with a 1.5 gigahertz quad core ARM processor and then a selection of one, two or four gigabytes of RAM. In the UK, you can buy the one gigabyte model for £34, two gigabytes is £44 and three, uh, four gigabytes is £54. In the US, one gigabyte is $35, $45 gets you the two gigabytes and then as you guessed, $55 is the four gigabyte version. Doesn't really make much sense, in my opinion, to buy anything less than the four gigabyte version if you're using the Raspberry Pi as an accessory for your iPad. Coming back to the unit on the side here, you'll see that there is a USB-C slot and two micro HDMI slots and a 3.4 millimeter audio jack. You can power the unit over USB-C and you can power it from the iPad Pro itself, which is fantastic. That's one of the key features I think that makes the Raspberry Pi 4 a nice addition to the iPad Pro. This USB-C socket also has an extra feature, which we'll see shortly, and it's that that makes it the killer addition for using with the iPad Pro. Both of these micro HDMI sockets output 4K and one of them will output 4K at 60 Hertz. And this is just stereo audio over 3.5 mil. So if we go to the back here, what you'll see is that we have gigabit ethernet, two USB 3 ports and two USB 2 ports. And this is true gigabit ethernet, unlike the gigabit ethernet port that came with the Raspberry Pi 3, which was actually limited to around about 300 megabits per second. And then on the back here, the final piece of the puzzle is this micro SD card slot where you put the SD cards containing your operating system that you want to use. If we return to the USB-C socket here, not only can you power the, uh, you, the Raspberry Pi using that socket, you can also communicate between the iPad and the Raspberry Pi using that USB-C socket. This means that you don't have to have your Raspberry Pi connected to a Wi-Fi connection in order for it to communicate with the iPad. This is huge. Now, with the Raspberry Pi 3, you have to have the iPad and the Raspberry Pi connected to the same Wi-Fi network or to the same Ethernet network if you have an Ethernet adapter for your iPad. And that can be quite unwieldy when you're traveling. Uh, you, it's hard to connect the Raspberry Pi to a Wi-Fi network if you don't have a screen and a keyboard and a mouse for it. But now, really easy, just plug the USB-C cable in and your, your iPad has a direct network connection to the Raspberry Pi. So obviously you need the Raspberry Pi and we've already seen the hardware for that. The second thing you'll need is a case. I just use this standard Raspberry Pi case, which is five pounds in the UK. It comes in different colors, but I've just got the gray one here. The case pops open and then you can slot the Raspberry Pi into it. Then once you've done that, you just pop the lid back on and you've got full access to all the ports at the back and all the ports on the side. And then also very important, you have full access to the micro SD card slot on the bottom. This leads us on to the next piece of kit, which is you need a micro SD card. You can definitely get away with something as small as an 8 gigabyte card here, but that won't really give you much extra space to install things on your Raspberry Pi. So I would say the minimum, really speaking, is 16 gigabytes. But I've been using this SanDisk Ultra micro SD card, which is 64 gigabytes and was less than £10 in the UK. At that price, it kind of seems silly to scrimp on the size there. And if you're really going to go heavy on this, you know, maybe even get 128 gigabytes or even 256. Then the final thing you'll need in your kit is a good USB-C cable. You have to be a little bit wary here. Not all USB-C cables will work when powering or connecting the Raspberry Pi to your uh, iPad. The one I've had most success with is this Anchor Powerline 2 cable. I have a couple of different sizes of this, and I'll, obviously I'll put links to this in the description below. This is a... 
ostensibly a power cable, but it seems to give very good data rates, at least for my use cases. If you're more data rate sensitive, you may want to try a bunch of other different cables, but I've actually had not much success with the cables I bought for kind of like disk usage and things like that, that are high data rates. So that's the kit I'm using. Let's now see about connecting this Raspberry Pi to the iPad using USB-C. So the first thing you'll need to do is actually install an operating system on your Raspberry Pi 4. I'm using Raspbian Buster, and I'll put a link in the description below to how to install that on your Raspberry Pi. The next thing you need to do is actually configure your Raspberry Pi to use a USB-C Ethernet connection. This is not something that works by default. You'll need to make sure that you have the latest bootloader. Again, a link in the description below for that. You'll also also need to just basically configure that USB Ethernet adapter and I'll link to the amazing guide by Ben Miller below which will show you how to do that. The whole process once you've got an installed Raspbian takes about five minutes don't be intimidated by it it's, it's super simple. Once you've done that, it's really easy. Just plug your USB cable into the Raspberry Pi and then plug the other end into the iPad. It takes, you know, maybe 60 seconds for the Raspberry Pi to boot up at, at, at worst. And then what you'll see is if you go into settings on your iPad, you'll see that an Ethernet adapter pops up and that is the uh, adapter to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. While this is connected, you can still use Wi-Fi and you can still use LTE on your iPad. So you're not losing your internet connection. You just have an extra connection to talk to the Raspberry Pi. If you follow the instructions that I have linked, then you'll end up with the Raspberry Pi having a fixed IP address of 10.55.0.1. And we can then use this to connect to the Raspberry Pi for our work. Let's now see some of the use cases that I have for using the Raspberry Pi. So my primary use case with the Raspberry Pi is, of course, if you've seen any of my other videos, is coding. And I have basically every coding tool I need installed on the Raspberry Pi. So Ruby, Python, Rust, Haskell, basically everything that I am doing in my coding work is installed on the Raspberry Pi. Then I'm connecting to the Raspberry Pi using the amazing Blink SSH client and again using that fixed IP address of 10.55.0.1. This works really, really easily. I have also configured my Blink to use SSH keys to connect to the Raspberry Pi. And if you go into the Blink configuration, you can configure like a, a host alias name, which means it's really easy just to connect with SSH space RPI or whatever you want to call your little iPad Raspberry Pi. So I'm also using a great app called Juno Connect, which allows me to connect to a running Jupyter instance on my Raspberry Pi to do any kind of data science work. This is absolutely amazing for me. And this is not as powerful as my laptop and wherever possible, I will have remote access to my laptop or to a machine running in the cloud. But if I'm on a train with bad connection or if I'm stuck in an airplane or something, I can carry this tiny little Raspberry Pi with me and I actually do have a working code environment. So the second use case I'm using the Raspberry Pi for is disk management. One of the things I find myself doing when I'm on the road shooting is I have a lot of USB-C disks or USB disks that have footage on them and I need to move the footage between them or back up the footage between different drives. And this can be quite hard using the iPad since you only have the one USB-C socket. Even if you do have a hub, you don't necessarily have the best experience trying to move files between disks using the inbuilt iOS files app. With the two USB 3 sockets on the back of the Raspberry Pi, I can plug in two of these like Samsung disks, for example, that I use, and I can easily then using the command line over Blink, move files around between these drives. The performance isn't amazing on this. It's not like it's the fastest copy or anything like that, but it certainly works when you're out in the field. And again, it's such a, a small device that it's just easy to have it in the bag to do this. To really kind of boost this workflow with disks, I do two other things as well. I have set up network sharing on the Raspberry Pi so I can actually access my uh, file system on the Raspberry Pi from the files app in iOS. This just means it's really easy if I want to get multiple files off different disks and still have the Raspberry Pi connected. I can just plug them into the Pi and then pull them in from the files app. This is really powerful. And then the final thing I do in this space is um, if I'm in a, a room where I need to work for a little while, I'm working with some colleagues, I can connect the Raspberry Pi to the Wi-Fi in that room and set up disk sharing. So then we can all share those disks and we can all pull down footage or coding files or whatever without having to have some big contraption carried with us.
So there, that's it. My Raspberry Pi 4 is my favorite accessory to carry with the iPad. Now, of course, I could easily carry a laptop with me and I could easily carry my iPad at the same time, but that gets to be quite a bulky kit. And my aim with all of this is to try and travel as light as possible and have as low a power requirement while I'm traveling as possible. So the Raspberry Pi just allows me to fill in those few gaps that I have when I only go with my iPad. I hope that you found this video useful and I hope you found it entertaining. Please do hit like, do hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.